<coughs> Pat now will discuss um, the sales price and the terms and conditions. Thank you, Ogo. The first Orbo product, the OQ. Orbo is a highly controversial technology, and we're going to demonstrate the functionality of the OQ. Okay, so what we're going to do now is discuss the actual product itself. Um, this is what we call the O-Cube. And the O-Cube is a very simple device. It's a power brick or power cube that has one single USB output. USB output is 2.1 amps, so it can charge both tablets as well as, sm as smartphones and other devices. Um, in terms of the components inside, there's really only three things. There's um, a standard USB um, uh, PCB, uh, Interface Electronics. There's a lithium-ion battery and then there's the Orbo power pack. And how it actually works is very, very simple. <coughs> um, when you plug a device into this, what you're doing is draining the energy in the lithium ion battery. Um, but the Orbo device, the Orbo um, device is constantly powering the battery. So there can be situations where you draw um, and completely drain the lithium ion battery. Um, but what will happen is that over time, that the Orbo device itself will recharge the battery. In terms of power output, you're looking at approximately two full smartphone charges in a 24-hour period. <coughs> Pat now will discuss um, the sales price and the terms and conditions. Thank you, Ogo. The uh, O-Cube go goes on sale in December and is available only from Storm. The cost price at this unit is 1,200 euros. We're also offering a 12-month warranty return to base. Okay, so the way that we're demonstrating um, function here is that we're giving out the O-Cube to a variety of different people. Um, and they will be reporting back on their day-to-day -day use of it at each of the subsequent webinars. Pat, maybe you can tell us a couple of the people who are getting it. And obviously, there'll be more and, um, uh, as the process goes on. Okay. Um, the first of these companies is a company we, we've been working with for the last uh, couple of months, a company called Rabbit Hole Promotions. Um, these, this company works in the area of guerrilla marketing and uh, very uh, edgy in their approach and it's, we think it's a, it's a perfect fit for us. Yeah, we think they're going to do some really interesting um, and unusual things with the Paracube in terms of their own day-to-day -day marketing yeah. stuff, but we'll let them report back in the next webinar. Second company were, is, a, is a clothing company, also a Dublin-based company called Brick Bear. Um, same as these guys are into some very um, different type of clothing, and we think that there's, there's, a, there's a, a very nice fix as regards what the, the power cube can, can produce for them on a day-to-day -day basis as well. And while we do have a business relationship, uh, obviously, with Rabbit Hole, um, Brick Bear don't do myself and Pat sizes, so there's no actual formal relationship. Um, one last thing that we should say, is that while the O-Cube um, is the first commercially available product um, with Orbo, there's a lot of stuff that's happening behind the scenes with respect to commercial licensing. Can you zoom in on that one? Okay, there are three components to an Orbo battery and for the people who are here, I'll let you come out and have a look afterwards. For the people on camera, uh, I'll just show you. There are very basically two dissimilar methods. Um, which you can see here, this is a couple of and this one has more connected to it. And then there is what we call electric material. And the difference between, and these would be sheets, they would be basically any physical format, but fundamentally it's two different metallic no, no, components no. and um, an agent or a gel. So in that way, if anybody's in any way technical, it looks identical to a galvanic cell. Uh, yes. And a galvanic cell or a normal battery is something um, like chemically eroding the other components. Uh, what's different here is that the gel that we're using is entirely inert, has no chemical interactions. And what we do, and I've got a quick um, example here on screen, um, and this is simply these two similar, the similar metals, um, this material, and we melt it up to just beyond the melting point. And what we're doing here 
is that we're creating the electric version of the Perlman magnet. It's called an electric. So this is something that is a material that holds a permanent electric field in the same way that a magnet holds a permanent magnet field. And it's actually quite simple to do. All that we do is the actual office of chemical, chemical formulas of this are not, are not that simple. Is once we bring it above its melting point, and if we let it cool down um, at a relatively slow rate in the presence of an electric field. So all that we do here is we're generating a very strong, and if anybody uh, will remember these things, Van the graph generators from, uh, from high school or wherever, um, what these do is this creates a very, very strong electric field. And quite simply, all that we're doing is this material is now molten, is that as this material melts, what it does is it retains the electric field that's applied to it. So that when this solidifies, and we do it very, very slowly, at the end, it's, it's got, it drives a positive energy. Right? And regardless of how sophisticated the batteries may look or, might, or may get, and the reason I've done this on something that does not look very sophisticated, but they're melting slightly, is to demonstrate that it will always be exactly the same effect, which is two dissimilar metals and an electret or something that creates a permanent ferroelectric um, or permanent electric field. And when polarized the right way, what you end up with is something that is positive and negative. So I'm sure most of you have seen where we'll short out something and we drain the energy and then it bounces back. And that's simply the permanent electric or the permanent magnetic effect saying that it doesn't really matter what you do to me, I will always polarize. So the Orbo battery is an electrical field version of the magnet, original magnetic thing. So it is a consistent, um, similar, and in many ways an incredibly simple piece of technology. Two metals and some guns, okay, uh, um, to be frank. Now, that's very well and we've demonstrated that and, and we got through a lot of the questions that, um, that were asked uh, via emails or phone calls during the week. Um, yeah, we're kind of well. How long have you run this for? And we, please, and you know, how can you be sure that it lasts? And so, on. well, the answer to that is that the original batteries that we made, you're on your way out oh, here, nice. you'll see that they're still wired, drawing power for um, 24 7 for nigh on two years uh, with no degradation. And that we know that theoretically these materials will hold the electric field, will hold them again, circa 800 years. So, where we've got to 12 years into this project is, is a principle that's simple, a principle that is relatively easy to manufacture. So, what are the challenges? Well, why isn't this in my mobile phone or whatever? And the driving points in every single type of battery technology, whether it's ours, whether it's lithium ion, or whether it's anything else, is what's called power density. And power density is very simply the amount of power you can output for a size. Uh, now, in certain industries, it's power to weight. So in, in the, in the um, uh, transportation industry, it's power to weight. In the industry that we're in, which is mobile and consumer electronics, it's power to volume. So I might be able to build a battery that can power a man's phone, but if it's that big, it's of no value. So these kind of relatively unsophisticated batteries have a horrendously bad power to um, volume ratio. And what we've been working on in the two years is improving that just by engineering it in different ways. Very ultra thin film and so on. And so kind of robots and you see uh, if you're here, <coughs> other things about it. And all that we've come down to is multi-layered thin film batteries. Um, we are at a point where in the last 12 months, two years, we probably had about a five to 600 increase in power density. That's the amount of power per volume. Um, and we're probably, in terms of a, a specifically a mobile phone, we're probably two to three times. So the two to three sounds horrific, but in real terms, in terms of where we got to, it's, it's, it's not that bad at all. Um, so hopefully that gives you some appreciation for um, 
what it is, why it is all about, and what's involved in building it. Again, this is a really cheap, ugly demonstration, but it's the best way to understand and the way these things are manufactured, and they're probably manufactured in China, because obviously a lot more automated, and sophisticated, and smaller and faster. But it's the same. It's absolutely identical. Um, now um, I'd like to just talk about, and I'm going to take that out of the way, um, some of the products. And, and I guess maybe before doing that, and, and again, anybody who's here can have a look at these. Um, the battery that we have works. It works very well. Um, it, it's unlike other batteries in, in certain perspectives in that the voltage output levels, and like lithium ion is 3.7, your double A's are 1.5, and your triple A's are 1.2, and ours has an unusual voltage output. But other than this curious fact of recharging itself, it's no different than any other battery. Um, and therefore, it has a product place. Now, we made a decision in order to be able to, to demonstrate and again achieve licensing, which is rather than running to the industry with what we've got and trying to license it, that we would first of all place some product in the market and use that to create a better marketing position for ourselves, to try and get better value. Um, the specific products that we have looked at are e-cigarettes, which I'll discuss, um, power cubes, and mobile devices. So what I want to address first of all is the e-cigarettes. So Louis, if you can zoom in here, please. Can you zoom in a bit closer? See, somebody in the family is good with technology. Uh, <laughs> and just maybe tilt another use. Ah, brilliant, thank you. Um, when we started, well, first of all, for anybody who doesn't know what an e-cigarette, an e-cigarette is a very simple device. It is literally just a battery, um, and it's a chamber. I'm trying to do this for camera and for, for, for off screen. And in the chamber is a little heater, and the battery powers um, the little heater, and the little heater vaporizes the fluid, and the fluid can then be smoked or, or inhaled. And that's all any e-cigarette is. It's just simply, it's a heater for fluid and it's electrical. So it's a battery and it's a heating chamber. Um, when we started to look at these with um, an Irish company uh, called Liquid Solutions um, in excess of year, the market was primarily around um, five watt devices. Now, I have to put, and I'm going to have to be slightly technical explain this. Um, your iPhone draws an average of 0.2 watts. Okay, so over 24 hours, 0.2 watts. It's not a lot. This is what the battery industry is experiencing. Um, five watts in an e-cigarette obviously seems like an awful lot, but that's five watts that's used. Maybe you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds an hour. So it actually averages out to the average power use of these original five watt devices is in the range of um, is in the range of about 0.1, so about half of what ground is. Um, so relatively achievable for what we're doing. Um, however, the industry, the e-cigarette industry, has changed. Um, all of the money right now is in. If you look at this, is um, this is um, an e-cigarette battery from a company called Baker Shark, and this is one from Puff. Both of these produce 40 watts. So to put that in perspective, that's eight times more, or 0.8 of a watt on average, which is simply impractical for our technology to do today, okay, within this type of size. So we've been discussing with our customer, and uh, with Baker Shark and Puff, that the original intention was to simply place our battery into their product um, we can proceed with that, but there's no market for the 5 watt products. What we need these guys to do is to engineer their products around our battery. That's uh, a fundamentally different thing. Um, as far as I'm aware, I, I see Eamon here will, will know a bit more than I. Um, as far as I'm aware, these three companies are looking at putting together a consortium to do that. So, have we shipped any e-cigarette batteries? No, there's no market for the kind of battery that we can produce. 
However, these three companies um, are going to design, as I understand, the product to fit around our country. Uh, it will not be a full product, it's just physically not made. So I guess we'll come back to that. I'm going to remove these for a minute. Obviously, in the meantime, we have not been, um, have not been, uh, we've been working on the products itself. Now, many of you will have heard us talk about a USB power cube, and this is a prototype case. And what I'm going to show is simply so that you understand, I guess, first of all, what is it? Um, a USB power cube is simply a device. Right. is simply a box, and there's plenty of them on the market, where you can plug in any USB device, so that could be your phone, your iPad, or whatever um, you require, and it provides power to charge up your device. So it's a fairly um, simplistic um, device. There's lots of them on the market. They range from eight quid, um, five or six quid sometimes, you know, up to a couple of hundred dollars. Um, what we've been working on is our version of one side of these prototypes. I, I probably need to explain what's in a power cube. What's in a power cube, from our perspective, is our battery, uh, which is this. And this is a relatively high powered uh, battery that's been manufactured in China and packaged here for us. Uh, as I said, one of the unusual things about our battery is that it produces unusual voltage output. So I'm going to go to each of the components separately. Um, we then have a circuit board that we have developed and it's owned by us. What this does is it takes any voltage on this side and always gives five volts out. So it's a regulator. That's all it is. It's like whatever you give me, I'm always going to give you five volts out. Um, we then have a lithium ion battery. And what we do is we take the output from our regulator chip and this is the same in all products. What our system is doing is simply continually triple charging the battery. Okay. So, in so every the muzzle is something to me, like where are you? Always a traditional battery. So, so where you are, charging. no, I must be very well used to do that. And he said that, uh, yes, the uh, the standard battery my battery that we're constantly charging is a standard bit of tea. Yeah, no. USB electronics. And these are all the components. So then, other than casing, yeah, boxing, yeah, 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 So, yeah. where are we with this? Thieves. Well, Thieves. we're here, and people are here, and we see around really? the really? electronics. There is being um, is, tested uh, here no more with respect to the traditional parts. So, um, you can download the camera, choose the parts that do um, um, the parts okay. to this. And the batteries or drug batteries share customs in Dublin today. Um, so we're pretty much at the point it's where sure we're not going to launch this product but sometime in the next couple of weeks. A couple of things that are going to shock people. Did he contact you? I'm going to get them. No. <laughs> are you sure he has a, you know, the price for this thing is 1,230 euros. It's not on break. Which seems like a Ridiculous amount of money for a power cube that is uh, big and chunky. Well, uh, however, when we look at yeah. the type well, of wires we survey, we see the logo. Maybe you thought it was a cheap one, a quick way to set the term. The initial uptake on this and the initial wires of this are not by the power cube. As a unique mm -hmm. Did they only sell the electronics and leave all to the plants? A ridiculous mm -hmm. premium. Mm -hmm. Listen, don't remind me of all the stuff you have here. No, I want him to give me a look at it. Again, the term is yeah, 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 true. If he's already got people stealing stuff, you shouldn't have access to his office or market to go for paper. That makes me very nervous. Now, whether the power cube achieves that or not, we don't know. So, in the pipeline, and I'm going to quickly show you here. And if not, he's got a paper that needs to be changed. This is a couple of weeks away. I can't have all this computer equipment in there with him having off the key. We cannot be 100% sure. We need to keep that to guys. No excuse. Move 
from the rest of the industry. And so in the meantime, and I'm going to show you very briefly, um, we've been working on, I think we've said mobile phone, but what we've been working on is an iPhone battery, no, it's an iPad battery. Um, this is the current iPad battery. So you see it's very, very big thing. Uh, put in real terms as part of the case for cover, and it would be split front and back. And we wouldn't get any it's actually because perfect. it would be a small so economy of key. And again, obviously our focus on that would be moving the uh, power cubes. And in behind that, the next tactical move of doing uh, an iPad or doing a phone is already there it's in test. It's just a question of activating. Now, we ask you, we don't want to manufacture cell iPad covers or phone covers or, or any of these things. It, um, the only reason we will do that is to continue to put pressure on the industry to do business in our terms. Um, so again, for anybody who's here, uh, you can see, again, this, is, this will keep your iPad uh, for normal use, I should say, pretty much pumped up uh, very continuously. Is that still working? And I think that really gives a fairly reasonable um, uh, look at the situation of, of the business, I hope. Um, and I think, Pat, anything I've got there, Pat? Just quickly, what is that? What is just exactly what this actually represents? I don't know specifically what this actually does in the platform. Okay, so the iPad Pro is the first thing. Okay, um, the reason that we've gone with an iPad rather than a phone. And again, a decision to launch this is not made. I mean, we need to make that clear. We haven't decided to launch either a phone cover or an iPad cover, but the advantage of the iPad is there's lots of room to work with. So our engineering in terms of products doesn't need to be as sophisticated as uh, my phone, which has a cover on it. Uh, so if you look at, uh, and I'd like to thank a member of the audience for this device, uh, if you look at the engineering behind the existing batteries, extend, life extenders in the phone market. It's, it's substantial. Again, it's not something that we shy away from. It's just something that may or may not be necessary. So we focus instead, and this will go into a plastic case, and it is literally um, something that we've completed development on in the last couple of weeks. And it will fit in a very similar fashion to this product brand at home. And what this does is constantly charge the battery in the right back. Now, a couple of things that I should say is, first of all, if you, just from the point of view of expectations on all of these things, if I was to use this iPad 24 hours a day, um, seven days a week, it will use power greater than the rate that we can find. So it will run out. So in any of our products, if you use them beyond the norm, the traditional battery is being drained, we can't keep up. And so there are um, see what it's circumstances in the e-cigarette, in the power cube, and, and in the iPad, where we can drain, where the user can use this and drain. Story. And what will happen in that case is it will like any normal dead battery function. Yeah, so uh, well. the, the product will stop working. But our battery just continues to be pumped the environment. This is a phantom too. Yeah, um, all of the batteries that we produce are designed to provide power for the average. So you've got to kind of consider it a bit like when you use your phone and, and you're doing loads of stuff, the main battery will discharge at a very fast rate. But when you're not using it and we're, we're pushing it up at a rate, when you're not using it, it isn't discharging, we're continuing to push it up. So over a 24 hour period, that, that we're providing more than sufficient energy. That's pretty close, actually. But you can have abnormal wow. situations. Um, another thing that is going to absolutely horrify everybody, <clears throat> start by saying that other than the 1230 euros price and the look of it um, is that is what is the expected value rate of these devices so we're putting these out into the market and everybody there's going to be a huge emphasis on this a lot of people and we have to be realistic so the expected failure rate of this is one in four people are holy excuse I want you back up my god that sounds terrible um, where we've come to that number is we've looked at um, the rest of the industry. So the failure rate of this 
is 25.6%. All mobile consumer electronics have obnoxious value. This is all standard data. People, when you say that, so I just want people to be prepared. And so we're our failure rate for targeting is perfectly industry normal. Anything that's mobile, anything that you carry around, anything that's electronic, gets horrendous failure rates. Um, so from a costing uh, standpoint, uh, what we're one doing one is, one is one I'm doing young people who to be a parent. From a costing standpoint, we're looking, we manage that quite soon by building yeah. a warranty for our costs. From a moderate standpoint, it's just this. And from managing that, we provide a 12 month warranty, and that is a no equivalent warranty. We just replace it, and we have to do that. When it breaks, and they will break, and they'll break. Good money. Certain people might find a fairly awful failure rate, but it's just industry norm for this. Uh, our policy More important is money for old road. <laughs> and the cost that anyway. built in, built in to it. Um, is this yours? Yes. That's yeah. mine. Just... It's not with questions from anyone. Hey folks, it's not just all these things. Or type it in for anybody, yeah. anybody online. I, I understand, again, it's a very new market, okay? but I understand these things. Um, I think anyone who's in the industry, as I understand, there's something in your pocket. It's like six months for e cigarette to last is considered normal. Uh, and again, that, a lot of these failures are not necessarily failures. It's failures because if you stick the cigarette in your pocket, you sit up there, it bends and breaks, it wears out. So if you look at the, yes. if you were to break down the 26 or 25.6 percent yeah. of the iPhone, yeah, then you would find about half of that is what you might call yeah. physical damage that the product is not designed to take, and half of it is component failure, yeah. things that break. How, how much is the yeah. um, But that 25.6 yeah. percent is what they wanted. Yeah. So this is the More ones that they replace. So in terms of looking at this, we have to be realistic. Uh, and again, um, we, we uh, consultant in with us here, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So we should be aiming for five. Of course, we should be aiming for zero percent. But but there's nothing. But also, we can't be un, unrealistic in terms of the expectations because most of the components in this are stuff that we buy, buy in that are in the other products, and they're subject to the same harsh. So the e-cigarette is unique in that, unlike the iPhone, it's shaped. When you stick it in your pocket, which is where people carry it, is dying to be broken, it's to be bent and connectorized. And, and yeah, this is just a piece of mobile consumer electronics. Well. Yeah. No, the, the market's changed. Absolutely not. It's not, not. You probably got something in one of the corners. No, it's broken there. Uh, I, I, I don't know. And, and again, sorry, stand up. It's in my way here. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's it's the power requirement's going to be I can't, I can't and, and whatever way you want to look at that's just the reality of it. Like, we can't do eight times power output in anywhere near the kind of shape or size that they're asking for. So they have to come back to the core. So we can produce the 5 watt device, right? nobody have it. It's kind of a futile thing. So we have to, um, and we've met with these guys, we've met with the guys in Italy and the local guys, and they get it. Um, but even today, in fact, the customer was in with us today, yeah? and even today he's bringing oh, new products, yeah, yeah. and they call sub-omic huh? dropping yeah, things. Yeah, this is a market yeah, that's changing yeah. fast. And we can't be currently now. can't meet the requirements. You, you need to get putting the key our key into the existing product oh, right, right. product to be re looked at. And again, that's just the facts. Well, the keys today we need it, time goes by. So like there is a question. Down. I'll just take a couple here. Here. It's not, No, it's more no, no, he's saying he's got robbed. We can't leave this office until he's got the bloody keys back. 
it's a bit late, I've forgotten. <laughs> Let's go with something. You only have to go to Berno Park. Look at people here. He's got his own face on it. Well, no, I, no, no, sorry. So There's a sales well. price as well. Sorry? So it's well, uh, well. The production they cost including warranty. Someone might already know that he Again, has very heavy as currently. We can drive that down to the same. Both in pay. small volumes, we're having these things machined Too much of a risk. and so on. We're looking at 500 euros, but ultimately it'll get down to 70. Where the hell would the model be marketed? Uh, okay, uh, again, something that, that um, uh, we're in many ways, and, and I, sorry, I, I no, if you get the question was, time, how will all I know, it's when we get the key back uh, today, from, and I guess, we're not going to leave the office, or I'm not, I'm not going to than any other company in the world, we, we, we develop a product, we stick in a box, and we're trying to sell it, whoever's stolen it, you know, whatever you business in the world, now, still get the key back that it's been and obviously stolen. part of that is marketing. Um, no, we don't know and what we're attempting I to know, do but we with know stolen the marketing get it is back, achieve is maximum saying. exposure for minimum dollars. Okay, so the way it be marketed will be viral. Again, it will probably upset and confuse quite a few people because the type of person that we're targeting this at and the type of a consumer who is going to initially buy this and the long-term brand objectives in the brand is at least as important as the technology from a return point of view um, um, do that so it will be viral marketing that's probably something we touch on in the next but we might have to do this again to go through it in, in the next couple of weeks but um, it's going to be entirely a viral marketing campaign there's going to be no adverts um, we're working with a company called rabbit hole at the moment um, who are excellent at doing this kind of viral marketing. No, I think that's it. Any questions from the floor? So the, the question um, from the Florence, I was repeating it for the people online, was, is there any way to improve the power output? And the answer is yes. Um, if I can just show to the camera first, these are the devices that we're having made up in China. So um, if you look at the power density of this, uh, it's actually getting very close to water. Um, but it's all about manufacturing process. There's nothing. There's no extra bit of magic that we can throw into this. It's about process manufacturing, the size of the components, and so on. So the answer is absolutely, but it's about manufacturing process that brings it to smaller, cheaper, better. Nothing fundamental that we can do to this. It's, it does what it does. It just needs to be made smaller um, with, more, you know, with different materials and under different circumstances. So fundamentally, yeah, we have 10,000 of these sitting in Dublin Airport right now that have been made for us in China to our spec and they will go start going straight into this um, and we will then be discussing with the manufacturer okay how do we make it even smaller how do we make it and, and that again is about investment in equipment machines and, and manufacturing processes so yes it, but it's entirely about manufacturing we're currently targeting 10 projects so We've ordered in enough components for the first thousand projects. Yes, and in, 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 in this, and I just maybe should explain this shape. This shape was the original cube version of the cube. Um, we have subsequently redesigned it to be this shape, so there'll be some interior layout issues. But the reason that these batteries that you will see lying around is that the originally the cube was a cube. Uh, it's no longer a cube. Uh, so this plastic is made up here and it's set and it's, it's set so and all that putting it together stuff is done here but it's, there's nothing sophisticated about that. The, the, the key element is, is these things. So it's a question um, and we only got this prototype, this latest prototype and I should maybe explain the difference here. Um, what is changing on it right now is if you see this, um, this is flat so when you plug your cable in there's potential it'll bend and break. So the only difference with this is that it's recessed. So 
you broke your cable and your cable's protected. But these are the kind of minor last issues that we're looking at. Yep. We're trying to avoid the term monkey end. <laughs> And if I get it wrong, Damon. <laughs> so the question was, do we have pre-existing orders and what's the time frame for that to go to people? And uh, the answer is yes, we've already had people pay for it um, and they're on pre-order. And I think uh, we're quite confident that, that um, we will know. Of the thousand we're having made, because of the one in four failure rate, we're actively only selling 700. Now, because we need to have a stock that we uh, the worst thing for us is to have a break, which it will, and then go, well, yeah, well, we can replace it in eight weeks. Uh, particularly from a marketing perspective, it looks bad. Now, what happens is that there's an awful lot of the components. Whatever breaks in here is most likely this bit. It's not maybe the expensive. So they'll be brought in and reworked. Um, in terms of what is the absolute launch date, we do not absolutely have it. Um, but we are literally talking... Um, days and weeks, and it's certainly not months, because we have all the components. The key bit um, has shipped. Uh, we're working with the manufacturer down in Waterford on just finishing these up. Uh, in fact, probably the bit that's the longest lead item at the moment is actually packed. Um, so the objective is to sell 700, um, which is a reasonable amount of 720,000 euros in revenue. Um, we're or 840, thank you, so that's why he does the money. Okay, um, it's, it's a really, and we then use the profit from that to reinvest and, and do the next batch and the next batch. Um, and that's, that's pretty much uh, what we're about. Yeah, so that's yeah. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, what's Year one was a long time ago, I can actually answer that. Yeah, okay, that's um, I, I mean, we have we have to be very careful. Again, there's no point in us sitting here and saying we know the demand for the power queue. Uh, what we've done is we said, look, we think fifty thousand is a reasonable number. Yeah, uh, and if we sell fifty thousand, you can work out the numbers of so, you know, twelve hundred quid each. Yeah, so you can see that there's an awful lot of potential there. But it may very well be that we have to drop the price. Um, it may very well be so, you know, if, I think in terms of us sitting here at this stage and going, look, we're going to make 5 million or 1 million or 50 million profit year one, um, it, it, it's not something we can say with any confidence. We can say we will, we will make a profit this year, a small profit. Uh, we will make a bigger profit next year. And I can't, um, I, I, I don't think it's fair for us to commit to what that is until we start to see the initial traction on the power So if the first thousand sell in three days, I think we can, you know, our confidence level will increase if they, if they you know, if it takes us three months to sell them, then we have to relook. Um, I think there was a question here. Um, I just found, sorry, I'm going to the... Um, uh, okay, uh, Joanne here is asking a question. If the, is, I was saying, if the demand for Orbo is there, and you, are you ready to produce another 50,000 units as necessary? Absolutely, but realistically what we will do there is we will license the product onto a third party. So again, our objective here has never been to, to, been to be a manufacturer, but it's to get own product in the market to achieve a goal. Um, so if we see this product take off, I think it's more realistic use of our resources to sell the rights to manufacture it to somebody and charge a few quid for every one of them. That's what licensing is. Um, and if the demand is there, I think uh, Brian is saying there's patent issues with the iPad charger. Um, Brian, you have to tell me what they are. I'm unaware of any. I'm unaware of any patent issues with the iPad charger. There are issues with connecting to all 
um, Apple devices. Apple have launched this new connection type, which is called Lightning. It's not new, but it's, it's relatively new. And to be able to connect to an Apple, you need to get a Lightning chip, which needs, means you need to be able to, um, um, you need to become an approved Apple vendor. And anybody who has Apple, if you ever seen this message that jumps up and say, not approved Apple device, that's because of this smart Lightning chip. How we get around that is that we don't sell the cables. So the other end of the connector is open industry standard. Um, and it would be the same with the iPad charger. So you have to actually use your own cable. So to connect this bit to this bit. Um, and it's a simple way to avoid an issue um, that we don't need to take on. If you offer kind of chicken charges to lithium battery, which then charges the consumer device, what is the device matter? Uh, okay, uh, first of all, let's. Uh, I, I want to answer the question in a different way. We first of all look at what's the lifespan of the product. Um, our objective is to power the product for its life. So, again, in the e cigarette, six to 12 months, in the phone market, seven to 18 months, and in the power cube market, something similar. So, um, well, the lithium battery, what happens with lithium batteries is as you charge them, they get. They, they age, they get, they take less and less and less and less charge. So the depth of them or how much charge you're holding tends to reduce and reduce and reduce. Uh, what, that, what that effectively means to you as a customer is that you plug it in, it seems to charge really fast and it doesn't last long. So it's saying 100% but it's lasting three hours instead of saying 100% and lasting 12 hours. Uh, in the event of a trickle charge, that's not really an issue for us because we're constantly, we're constantly doing that. Um, uh, could prevent the going to this month? Uh, not having, not having the, I mean, I, and I'm not being blase, not having it completed. Um, we are waiting for packaging, we're waiting for anodized uh, metal work, um, you know, um, PCBs in, in and out. So, I mean, what, what I'm talking about here is not a question of it being, um, being it, it's very different. It's completely our design and our control. And what we're doing is simply assembling components that we design and buy in. So any slippage on that is, is minor. We're unreliant on anybody else. Um, no, I, I, and again, I'm not trying to be difficult, Brian, but um, our technology is patented and patent pending and I can't see why the iPad charger, and again, I'm not trying to be, would suffer any patent issues. Uh, Deirdre, is the robot assembling parts for the power cube? The robot is currently sitting there waiting for the 10,000 parts to arrive, hopefully tomorrow. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, just as, no, no, uh, please. Yeah. as a Sorry. Uh, chair, I yeah. three of them as chairs. What yeah. expectation can the shareholders have of dividends? Okay, within our current shareholders agreement, it's very simple. 50% of all profits are paid as dividend. And again, I, I, we can sit here and theorize what that profit's going to be. Uh, the reality of it is we're launching a, a vastly new product um, at a very high price into a market um, that is unaware of its coming. So um, I... We're extremely confident the profit, the profit level, and subsequently the dividend, because the dividend is half the profit. Um, I think we can only realistically answer that with any certainty once we start selling them. So in other words, if we start selling them and we see demand at X a week, it becomes very simple to kind of go, okay, that's fine, then we can work it out. Right now, everything about it is 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 in terms of its um, sales, its pricing, and its profit, and and and, and its market uptake is an unknown. So I would love to answer the question when we start selling them. And if I gave you an answer now, it would have no validity. Uh, and so I won't. So now I'm not, that's not avoiding, I'm trying to explain why it's unanswerable in a way that makes sense today. A lot of the questions um, 
Uh, I'm sorry, I should re re repeat the question. I think the question is, does, is the IP protection in place for licensing? I think. Is that a fair summary? Um, and the answer is, is yes and no. Uh, as in, we have patents. We have, and you pass and you see in my office there, there are loads of patents and trademarks and everything you would expect, but they're not testing in court. Um, and so, and again, I'm not being negative, I'm being realistic here. I mean, if you look at the, the absolute war between Samsung and Apple with thousands of patents over products, this is a voracious market. Um, so yes, we are covered, but that coverage is untested in the trusted market. But, but again, that actually brings up the real issue, is what our real protection is here is RAM. And everybody hates to hear this. You know, and, and, and we've been discussing this, and I'm going, look, we're not in the business of building batteries or creating free energy. We're in the business of a consumer brand. Because a consumer brand is worth far more than any of this stuff here. Absolute, far, I mean, typically 60 to 70 percent of the value of a business is in its brand. So it's the brand that protects us. So this all about thing and, 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 and everything associated with it gives you far greater leverage with your customers and gives you far greater revenue and gives you far greater protection than anything else. But brands are really easy to protect. Technologies are complicated. Want to try it? Uh, the, the question was how much additional weight on the back of the iPod on the iPad. I, I would imagine we're looking at doubling the weight. Uh, yeah. Okay, so the first consumer product, um, and the question was what is the weight? If, and again, if you're here, this is easy. Um, but um, this is going to be built out way about half a kilo, which is obnoxious, and it's big. And Pat doesn't like me saying it. I don't like it. I don't like the way it looks. Um, but again, to understand the process that we've got to, we have had this designed um, and built and the weight and everything that goes with it directly with the people who prepared to spend the money. So my view on whether I like it or don't like it is irrelevant. It is all driven by uh, the consumer who is most. So this thing will end up at about half a kilo, of which, by the way, 50% um, of that is the case. Uh, the case is big and heavy. Um, and, but again, it's, it's also not a product you can stick in your pocket. It's, it's a statement piece. It's not, it's not a power cube. You wouldn't buy this power cube if you wanted a power cube. If that makes sense. You buy this because of the significance of what it is. Twelve years is a long time to get to a point where you still do not have a phone back. How confident are you? How long do you believe that this will take for that to achieve? Oh, okay. Well, I, I guess the the point is we do have a phone battery. The, what's in here is a phone battery. Um, it's rather large. Um, we have batteries that power mobile consumer electronics, and again, the reason to repeat myself, the reason that we're putting these things into market is to create a licensing position for the manufacture of these to be taken over. What makes our power cube, which is by the way, 50% of the space of the people's technology and 50% ours. Um, go to being able to fit into your phone is about manufacturing. It's not about technology or development that we can do. Um, I, I mean, Paul is asking, Chinese manufacturers aren't renowned for their secrecy. Um, what's to stop someone in China from taking tech uh, The answer is absolutely nothing. Um, and again, for people to understand this, we manufacture in China because of capability. Um, we found one other company Ken, Ken, don't mess with this, right now. I'm to make uh, in the US cost time scale. Um, um, I know she wants some photos, but I've got the other things that I need to do. If we didn't manufacture in China, we would stop Chinese okay. companies working uh, really this flawed. They just buy it, re-engineer it, and do it anyway. Did you like the port? So, um, the protection, yeah. it, it did break again, it out, is you know? no different than anybody else who manufactures a product that has value in the market. They will be counterfeit. 
it's a problem that we need to manage. Um, the issue is not as manufacturing in China, the issue is, is as any company that gets counterfeited, the issue is managing the counterfeit. Um, so I hope, so, I hope it's done that. In terms of um, bring it out under different brands, absolutely, but most counterfeits run your own brand. So you're controlling your supply chain and your consumers how you, uh, and, and your, your route to market is how you manage it. Um, but again, we're, we're not in any unique position with respect to this. And again, the fundamental myth here is that if we manufactured it in Boston, um, the Chinese wouldn't rip it off. If it's got value, the Chinese will rip it off. So I will the Russians and the Vietnamese and everybody else. It's our job to make that problem as small as possible. Is there a second source for the Yeah, I, I, the materials are not um, are not that specialized. Uh, in other words, there's no kind of material in, the, in here that is necessarily um, in, in, you know, in, in, in limited supply. Um, it's the same materials that's in, that's in. In terms of, like I said, that we have currently one manufacturer who can do this. Now, we ordered 100,000 units from this manufacturer. I want to put the scale into perspective here. It's taken four or five weeks to arrive. Sorry, 10,000 units, five weeks to arrive. Those units were made in a day. Like, they just happened to have other shit, like, other stuff to say. Like, okay, sorry. <laughs> and so as we get more now, a lot of the reason for that is a lot of specialist equipment in there. And, and a part of our job will be to find other manufacturers, Chinese or uh, almost certainly Asian manufacturers, who can do the same thing so we're not held in, in the hands of one. Currently, that isn't an issue. I, I, I'll just repeat that question. Okay, the question was. Uh, are we being led up the garden path uh, by the e-cigarette company? And, and as I said, they were in with us today, and they're getting the same question, which is, is John leading you up the garden path? Um, the, the answer to it is, the answer to it is, is the straight answer is no, uh, absolutely not. Um, and the other answer is, this is a market that's changing hand over fist faster than anything I've ever seen. And so um, we could produce what we originally contracted to produce, and it will be sold for six dollars, and we lose money, and they lose money, and we get us our work. <laughs> Again, Alan, it is it is simply a fact of the rate of change of the market. I mean, if you go back, um, if I take this or these ones, they, 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 these were there. Twelve months ago, this this is a market that is exploding beyond. I, I I've said to them, um, I said, look, I remember the start of the PC industry. Yeah, it was mad. There was thousand players. They're all producing this. The rate of change in this market is this thing times ten or twenty. Yeah. We can't, we can't do 40 watt, okay, so Alan's question was, um, can we produce the battery to produce 40 watts in this size? And the answer is no, no chance. If we could do that, we'd, have, we'd be powering your phone then. No, I, I, again, I don't, I don't want to give the wrong impression. The e-cigarette, again, is, is, is actually a phenomenal product and it's a great market. The problem is that we have to work with these guys to change the design of their product to suit us. 100%, yes, 100%. Um, uh, they, they look, for, they're, they're no different than the phone company. The, the guys who start to sell the everlasting the cigarette battery um, are going to sweep the market in the same way the guys in the phone. But also, this is a very young market. It's a huge, making a huge amount of money and changing 
like you wouldn't believe, including regulation, trains, and, and all of that stuff. So, um, you know, it, we're, the other thing I need to say in this is that there is nothing that we've done in the e-cigarette battery today that we wouldn't have had to do anyway. We haven't gone down a path and gone blah, blah, blah. Everything that we've done, in fact, the e-cigarette batteries, even the shape of these things, okay, they're going into the power tube and everything else we're doing, they're all, they're all identical. So it's, it's, it's frustrating, and I get people's frustration with it. But again, I, I'm not, I've, I've had to apologize for many things in this company over the years, rightly. Okay, <laughs> the rate of change of the e-cigarette market is not what I'm going to apologize for. It's simply a fact. It's a brilliant market to be involved in. We are involved. We will get a product out there, and we'll make a very nice return on it. Um, but equally, we can't launch a product that nobody wants to buy. Makes no sense. Again, I th the question was the sequence of, of products, which is PowerCube, iPad, phone. And again, I'll, I'll repeat what I said at the beginning, okay? We don't want to do any of these. In an ideal world, we wouldn't be doing a PowerCube, we wouldn't be an iPad, we wouldn't. These are tactical tools to create the best licensing position for us, okay? If the PowerCube achieves that, what we do? We ain't doing this. We don't need to do this, okay? I think it's... I think that something like the iPad is far more likely to achieve what we need in the market and makes the phone unnecessary. That doesn't mean we don't do phones, it means we license and other people do phones. So all of these are tactical market entries that are, that are about what we've been talking about and our, and our strategy has never changed, it's license, license, license. No, no, I, 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 again, it, it's, it's our, yeah, sorry, the, 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 sorry, the phone market is what we're aiming for, okay, okay, the, the question, well, I just, I have to repeat this, Alan, sorry, I apologize, because uh, there's people who sing it, the question was, I thought the phone is what we're aiming for, and the answer is, and anybody who's been here long enough, we've been saying the phone, 12 years, it has not changed. The phone is what we want. The phone is where the money is. Uh, the question is, um, and the fact we want a license to the phone people hasn't changed. These remain the fundamental things that we've been talking about forever for 12 years. Uh, the question is, what tactically do we need to do to fulfill the strategy? What gets us a license agreement where we get value for what we do, um, but also we get longevity? Um, the, the, a lot of people go, why are you talking about that? I'll give you a very simple example um, from Apple. I'll give you two examples. The iPod. Uh, if you go back, about, what is it, 10, 12 years, my son would know when the iPod was launched. The iPod wasn't developed by Apple. The iPod became available because people developed small artists. Uh, Apple licensed the rights. You don't know who made it. I don't know who made it. And you want to know now about 20 companies make it. And it's the Apple iPod. The iPhone came about by guys making touchscreens. I don't know who made it. You don't know who made it. They licensed it to Apple and Apple only. Okay. This concept that we should run off and ignore the con consumer content is, is signing our own death warrant. To make money for a few years, uh, and, and that would be a relief, by the way, to a lot of people. Okay? We want to make money for a few years. We want to make money for five years, for 10 years, for 15 years. So to come back to answer the question, um, each one of these is a tactical tool to allow us to license to the mobile phone industry. If the power queue creates the right point to get us the right deal, we will never personally do an iPad. We will never personally do a phone. If we have to move on to the iPad, we will. Um, but as soon as that's done, uh, and, and as soon as we get the license, we will stop this. These are um, rocket science. The, 
question was, sorry, Rob, but I'm trying to repeat. Yeah. In the I, I, uh, okay, so the, the question was, will somebody try to buy the company? That's a question I can't answer. Uh, and again, my answer to remains the same, which is, if somebody makes an offer to buy the company, that goes to shareholders and we all decide. Uh, and that's the only answer. We are not focused on that. Uh, because for that to happen, we have to achieve something. So... I, I can't predict the future. I've been pretty bad at it for 12 years. I'm not, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna keep it up. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 it, 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 it's an absolute truth because, particularly in, in European technology companies, there's very few of them who last very long past success. They get bored, um, and maybe that's different shareholder mentalities in, in Europe. I don't know, but it's not our job to do that. The only reason somebody buys them is they see them making inroads into the market, and so the way you get bored is to do everything as if you're not going to get bored. You just go out and get the market to sell, and that's what we're, 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 we're doing. And, and if you get that bored along the way, it's not my decision. It's not anybody. It's the it's a 75 percent of the shareholders. Uh, okay, that's it's, it's a fair question. If in the kind of device, so the question was, why do we need a lithium battery um, at all? And that seems like a fair question. And um, what's the voltage output? So um, the reason that we need a lead a lithium battery is if you look at any consumer electronics product, its use, the amount of power it draws varies dramatically during the day. So when you're on the phone, um, you're drawing, you'll be drawing a couple of watts um, and so on. Now, if you build a battery that directly connects, that is has to meet that couple of watts requirement to end up with a very, very big battery. Um, so what we do is we use the, we, we say, what's the average use? And again, if I take the example of the iPhone when you're doing stuff with it, it's probably a couple of watts. But on average of 24 hours, it's 0.2 watts. So our battery for an iPhone will do 0.2 watts and the lithium, and it could be another technology, it could be the super capacitors or the, the reservoir, okay, will, will increase and decrease with use. But over 24 hours, it will, it will have received at least as much power as, as a user has, um, has used. If that, so it's a reservoir, if that makes sense. We, we, we dealt with that one, yeah. I, I, I would just comment and it's a bit flippant. I think the I think early retirement of Pat's age is long it should happen long ago, so <laughs> questions here about how confident do we feel and, and again we're, we're very confident in what we do but we've been like that for 12 years I don't think it's fair of us to answer these and say look we, we think everything's great well it's not we've been at this 12 years and, and we're, we're very late in doing what we should have done um, we are extremely confident in, in, in where we are um, we're, we're, it, it is un, it's unfair of us to commit to to any numbers to anybody now, uh, simply because the truth is, 
that nobody knows. There's no amount of analysis that you can do around launching such a, a, a unique product into the market at such a high price in such low volume. Um, that we, we, when we looked at this and said, look, how will we go about this? We, to do this in a full market survey mode would have cost a quarter of a million to 300,000 euros. That's just the fact. If you want to survey and say, how do you determine pricing points and uptake and, and so forth? It's cheaper for us to put the product in the market, which is what we're doing. Now, none of that is to say that it's being done uh, as in throwing mud at the wall. It just means that the type of analysis that we're doing is a lot less formal. It's using user groups and, and, and Facebook groups and people that we know are likely to to uh, to buy. So uh, the answer will be known incredibly soon. I, the, the, the question is if, if, a, if, a, if a week long battery became available, i.e., a battery that can power your phone. There, there is one out there, by the way. And again, a great example of why we didn't go directly to Apple. There's a company in the UK called Intelligent Power Solutions, I think, who did what everybody, what a lot of people want us to do. They went straight off with, with their stuff, and it's a week long battery. Yep. And it was all over the media last week, and there's a really curious reason why it was over the media. We went to Apple and Apple went, this is great, we'll fund it, we'll pay and, you know, and they got loads of money because Apple is, 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 is a partner. And Apple have made no commitment whatsoever on any timeline to put it in the market. None. And this was all over the media. I don't know if everybody's watching. It's a week long battery. There's a whole lot of really smart uh, reasons for that. And again, this is why and what the reason Intelligent Power came out and said, it's here, we've got it. And in fact, they said directly, when our partner is ready to put it in the market, we'll go. Because what Apple are doing is bleeding them to this. Now, now will that, the answer is, the answer is, I don't know. Okay, it comes down to consumers. Uh, it comes down to, the reason that our technology has a premium is based on how much value you put in your phone that money in. Uh, and so, and that, that's basically it. Yeah? I mean, it's like, what, what value do you put around this thing not lying? The, the, the question was, have we had interest from anybody else in the market? Um, uh, and the answer is constant. I mean, when I say it's, it's, it's constant, okay? Um, and as this began to leak a little bit, which we were responsible for, it's gone even more constant. Okay, so there's an awful lot of, and we need to, to build up pent up reasons for this. And our position on it, it remains the same. Buy the product and see if you like it. Okay. And again, I'll come back to it and I could repeat the story of intelligent power to every other unmarket proven licensed piece of technology. Where are they now? They're dead. If you want to survive in this industry, you build your own brand, you make your own way. We're, we're protecting our... We're, we're protecting ourselves by putting the technology in the market, creating a consumer brand. It's a consumer protection. So if the consumer is sitting there, well, I can buy that, but, but you've done a deal with you never, I don't, okay? And it's not in the market, which is where Intelligent Power found themselves, okay? We can continue to do this. In fact, we can do this as well. So you, you, a lot of people, these companies in this space will adopt and they will tie you up and, 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 and that is normal, yeah? Um, and that's part of the game. And the way you get around that is simply to develop your own brand. And there's only one example where Apple, you take, have ever co-branded with anybody. Yeah? And it was YouTube. You will never find Apple co-branding with anybody else. And the only time they ever do was a YouTube iPod. And the reason for that is they understand the rules of the game. It's the brand that counts, not, not the widget, not the technology. So we will try to... Um, we, we have to, uh, the rules of the game are no different for us. It doesn't matter how cool our widget is. It's just a widget. It's just something that 
does something. It, it's a question of how do we maximize the value to us today and in both. And, and it's, it's all about that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the question was, um, the, the question was, we've had several of these uh, pre-ordered, have they been ordered by players in the market? The answer is no. Have we had inquiries? The answer is absolutely yes. Constantly. Uh, that may, we may have to develop a different pricing model for the plan B. So be facetious. We get constant, but again, you're going to, we've made no publicity about this. Uh, and and we, now we've leaked a few things, we've played a few, and again, it's all a bit of our marketing. So we're confident that the uptake will be good. Uh, we have no doubt that anybody in the industry will buy it out of curiosity. Uh, but what we're interested in more is the consumer who buys it and, and again, spreading the brand to buy the next thing. The free energy tool has been Yeah. Not, not operate, sorry. No, okay. <laughs> the question was, is the free energy truth uh, website on, on Facebook? And the answer is absolutely not. Uh, the guy who runs it is a guy we met through the launch, uh, Craig Brown. Uh, and he absolutely loves it. And to me, that makes it more annoying than people actually hate it. But he is one of my friends on Facebook. So is, there, is it anything to do with nothing? No, nothing whatsoever. Nothing. Um, absolutely not. The question was, how are the finances? We closed a uh, funding round recently of a million, um, which is funding the components and parts for this. So they're currently, currently solid. Sorry? We, we're, 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 we have some existing commitments we're collecting, um, but what we're focused on is selling these things and making a profit. Yeah. Uh, if I, no, no, just, just, just uh, and again, I, I don't want to clarify what I'm just to see. Okay, we, we, I think Robert's question was we hope to be self-financing for now on. If the power cube sells, we will be self-financing. No, the question was, are all these shares were allocated to be sold? So the answer technically is no. I'm not, I'm no corporate finance person, right? At the last AGM, there was um, shareholder approval to raise from 20 up to 25. I think we raised two and a half of that, maybe. Uh, there, thereabouts, yeah. So there's still an existing mandate to raise two and a half million. We're not pursuing that right now. We're pursuing selling these things. If these things sell, we won't need to raise money. If, if that makes if that makes sense. We do. Um, oh, sorry, the, 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 the question was, why don't we have prototypes of wafer bin batteries? Uh, and the answer is that we do. Um, and indeed, um, if you look at, uh, find one here somewhere. Um, Louis, can you find me? No. Okay, we currently have, um, to answer the question, Pat, to dig one up. Currently our batteries are about 500 microns. Thick. Okay, but well, we need to layer many of them. So if you look at this thing, this is many layered thin batteries in the same way you would put loads of double A's into your remote and so on. Um, I'll, I'll show you one after, I will find one after. Um, but 500 microns is still too thick. So we need to go smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, it's just like um, uh, the question was, I understand the liquid solutions paid for the robots, which they did. How do they feel about it being used to manufacture another product? Delighted, I'm sure. Next question. I 
think unless there's any other, we're, we're digging through this. We will, um, as I understand, the software we're using automatically records this. Um, it will will po we'll post it up and um, in full and complete. Um, I think our objective here was to provide pre AGM um, an opportunity because we were getting a lot of people that were, you know there's not a lot of information floating around and. and whether the information you view is positive or negative um, is is personal. We want to give the opportunity to provide the information and to allow people to um, shoot questions and we get a chance to answer straight. And another one, excellent. Thank you, Robert. Um, that's. I don't have an answer to that. Okay, um, it's a matter for the board of the company. The board is next meeting is the beginning of next month. So um, I think that there's waiting for some accounts to be completed. Um, I think there are talk of the auditors, um, but ultimately it is it is excuse me, um, it's a matter of the board. And as I and again I I'd be speaking out of turn. I, I have I know for a fact that we we'll discuss at the next board meeting, which is a couple of weeks long. Yes. Uh, again, I think I, I, I did, I did a, a, a blanket uh, reply to that one. I, I guess uh, we were discussing this myself about, um, during the week, and I'm going. Everybody, everybody is striving for certainty ourselves, uh, ourselves included. But, but there's a difference between uncertainty, and we do have uncertainty in terms of how much and, and so on and so forth, and confusion. What we're trying to do here is remove the confusion. Things that we don't know, we can't tell you. So how many of these will we sell? When will they sell? We already get 1,230. We don't know, so we're not going to get dragged into it. What we can do is remove the confusion over what it is, of where we are with it. You can see all the bits are laid out. And hope to, uh, again, uh, can I have a T-shirt? Yes, um, hopefully. This is the this is the double X. That's one of the questions. <laughs> so, Actually, yeah. answer that question. We're actually, with every every uh, car cube that we're selling, we're actually giving that uh, t-shirt free. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it accentuates the bad stomach. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't I'd be okay here. Sorry, Robert. Uh, we we have some bad examples down in my office. Yes. So so in straight in strange enough, currently when we look at the launch of this or starting to fulfill the orders that we have. Believe it or believe it or not, currently the long the bit that's heard this out is uh, that. No uh, and yet it's also absolutely true. You got any answer from tomorrow? Packaging has to be spot on. So, Do you know where it is? Packaging is fully designed. We are really struggling is. to find, and we have an intermediary company working on this. We're struggling to find a company that can make the packaging to the quality that is expected for when you spend $1,200 on the product. It's very, very serious. We are expecting sufficient or, or further prototypes in Friday. Uh, product, when I say prototype, I'm talking about prototype packaging. Um, we have two options for the manufacturer. One is a seven day turnaround in China, um, then plus back. Uh, and believe it or not, they're probably the higher quality than the local turnaround. So, what we will not do is sacrifice the quality for a week. Uh, and, and again, as much I want this in the market more than anybody here, believe me. But we're not going to compromise on the things that make this product sell for the sake of a couple of days or a week. It's just not going to happen. Thank you. Can I have a car cube? Yeah, 1230 euros. Okay, here, here is, here is the question. I've ignored. Okay, uh, one for everybody in the audience. Well, let me put this in perspective. Okay, we've 600 shareholders. Our production cost is 500 euros. We'd be bankrupt. It ain't going to happen. I apologize. No. John, it's most just for you to wrap it up. We, you know, we've talked and we talked around the history that we've talked about. Maybe just for people who are not going out here tonight, that you know, the sales has the most. Say that. Okay, can, can I say, yeah. say something about it? What I don't want this to be is a sales conference. This is not 
This is not us trying to make you feel good about your investment in Scott. Okay? I don't want to make you feel bad about it either, okay? <laughs> like that I'm not here to, here to depress you. What I'm here to do is to try and remove some of the confusion and explain some of the uncertainty. They're known uncertainties. They're really not that horrendous. So, um, but we're not trying to do, look, it's all grand in this place. It's all really positive. Um, um, and and we're, we're making great headway. And like any little business, we have the ups and downs and, and so on. I wish the e-cigarette wasn't where it was. It is. I can't, I've got to deal with that, Jeff. I wish the power was in the market two years ago. It wasn't. Um, but the situation is what it is. Um, it's, if you step back from it, from it a little bit, it's an extremely positive situation. There's work to be done. The type of work we're doing is doable. Um, we certainly believe there's a very positive demand for the parts we're meant to put out. I, just to say that the, the, the statement was that after 12 years, there's an awful lot of, I'm going to be nice and say frustrated or, or I could use the actual word, which is resentful. Okay. I get that. And, and I, I, I'm not going to laugh about it, but I'm equally going to say, I can't change that. And I wanted to start with the history. So nobody is under any illusion. It's not something that, that, that we're unaware of, um, but it's not, you know, when, and you've got to start from our point of view, we paid a heavy premium for that. We, we gave away everything we owned in this company. As a car, I don't, I have no problem with that, but, but it's, not been, it's not been a case where the delays, which I'm also gonna say something about this man here, okay? Every single delay that this company has had has been technical, okay? Pat has no responsibility for the technology. He gets his information from me, from Max, and from the other guys, and he's borne the brunt of the frustration and the resentment and so on. And he's going well for something that he is simply the messenger in this case of shooting the messenger. But I'll come back to him and say, yeah, look, I get it. Do not think that, that, that we are divorced and we understand that. But equally, we have paid, we have paid a price for that. Okay? So it, it's not that it hasn't impacted us, it's impacted us amazingly. I'm not writing about that, I'm stating that it's a fact. Uh, and it doesn't change what we do today. And uh, again, I'm not going to say sorry for it again. Because if I could change it, I would, but I can't. So I mean. Okay, a question here. Can it be scaled up to run cars? And again, we get this all the time. And, and the straight answer is not by us. And, and, and the more uncomfortable answer, which I, we would have a debate constantly about this for hours if you believe in electric cars is that we would make no money powering cars and I can go into all the numbers it's probably not the time and the place um, it is not a lucrative market uh, Ford and again I just said punchline to, to make you think about this Ford make less a car which is what 20 25 thousand euros in real money than Apple make for a phone there's no reasons for that and actually not percentage I mean actual physical dollars in the market not a great market. So, and yet you can say petrol and so on. So the answer is, it is not on our radar, um, and it's not on our radar because the money is it isn't what we're attempting to do right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, the question was. Um, what is viral marketing and how are we going to do it? I mean, first of all, I guess, what is marketing? Marketing is about, is about exposure and getting your message across. That's what marketing is. And in the 60s, you sat there and we watched TV and, and it was a one-way thing. Um, viral marketing is using, and, and again, I'm sure that people would explain this in a better way, but in simply, viral marketing is using the conversations of others on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and all of this to do the promotion for you. So rather than you sitting there and centrally broadcasting a message, you stir it up and you let everybody stir it up and so it's back. So it's, it's a virus, it's viral, it goes out like that. Um, we are uniquely positioned for viral because 
the smallest thing that we do, we do measure this, and sometimes we do things um, just to see is there, it's kind of, and it's quite strangely scientific, we push what kind of response we get. So what we will do, and, and again, you'll laugh at this, okay, I put it on maps, our viral marketing campaign involves doing absolutely nothing, okay? No website, no social media interaction, nothing, but seeding people. And the non-existence of our social media impact is what will drive the social media. So, uh, and I'm, I'm not, we actually, and you, you'll be hard way to consultants who said, your best way to do this is do nothing. Well, and it sounds crazy, when you look at it, it actually achieves every objective we have. So we won't have a website, we won't have a Facebook page in terms of our Facebook page. We'll try to do nothing. And that lack of existence actually drives the social media wheels crazy, and that's that's what we're about. So that's kind of the ultimate execution. Yeah. The free energy troops is interesting. It's fifty thousand followers, um, and and they, look, they, these are free energy troops. It's the biggest fan this company has ever had, ever will have. But I'm not that interested in them. The best exposure we get is from the detractors. If you look at the demographic of free energy trees, I wouldn't say there's a lot of people there who buy our products. If you look at what new scientists said about us in a blog a couple of months ago, spitting fury, fantastic. It's called brand polarization. In fact, the best brands in the world are strange enough the most hated. Apple is one of the most hated brands and loved brands in the world. And that kind of polarization creates the buzz. Um, so we, we've been working with Rabbit Hole and a few other people looking at this. And we are uniquely well positioned to do viral. Viral has the other great advantages, relatively low cost. Um, so, sorry, no, the point is there won't be an official launch. It, it, it's the, the, I mean, if we launch and we have a thousand of them, we look like idiots, yeah? So the whole point about being viral is that you're, you're, you're creating this this mad buzz and demand, and the reason the price is high is to actually control, control that. So we're working with some very smart people in this area, uh, kind of companies who we're working with work for companies that you would you, you would know and, and, and well know. And, and again, we're uniquely positioned. And again, I don't want to say this is not about us looking for fame. It's purpose of the marketing exercise, no different than anybody, is to sell boxes. And, and so, um, yeah, as I said, it, it's. In some ways, the concept is very traditional. The way we're going to create it seems a bit wacky, but actually, when you sit down with the guys who are discussing it, it's actually perfectly rational. Sorry, another probably more pertinent question here is that we said the power kit has a product lifespan. Is it expected to have a lifespan of 18 months, for example? Um, we will warrant for 12 months, um, which again seems harsh, but that's the nature of the industry we're in. Um, what the actual lifespan will be of our bit, uh, I think, is many, many years. It's the other bits in it, the electronics and so on, that will break, but we warrant for 12 months. And again, I, I need to put this in perspective, okay? If that power cube, works after three days, it's an exceptional power cube. If it's working in a month, it's off the Richter scale. And if it's working in two months, it changes the world. So we have to put this in perspective. Will it still be working in two years? I don't know. I don't know. Things fail. Um, why are we only warranting for 12 months? Yes, if you get 12 months, it's proved itself as a product. Okay? This is not about us. It's also about us being commercial about it. Yeah? You buy warranties in this market for electronics that you're carrying around for 12 months. Very good reason for that. It's called, you look at the failure rates. It's ridiculously expensive to. <coughs> How would you define market in terms of website? Oh, okay. The initial sales are all um, done, going to be done from, uh, and again, I'm not going to get into it now, but there's a lot of, from pop-up stores, uh, which sounds crazy. How do you sell that many? But we leverage that to, and it'll be for sale on Amazon um, when we hit the right volume. So the pop-up stores are actually a, a viral uh, marketing thing. 
Um, it's not that Pat will be standing behind us all selling power cubes. Um, so the first thing will be face to face, and we leverage the buzz around that then too. Uh, and the sales of volume will be will be on Amazon. And no, we will not have a website at that point. Yeah. Now, let, let me just declare this. The one in four failure rate is kind of industry norm. That's what things in the industry, that's the failure rate of things in the industry. We expect to be the same as that, uh, to answer the question. Yeah. We, we, we have no plans to have a repair service. None. Uh, this, is, this is a strange industry. This is an industry of the ultimate disposal. Yeah? Um, but having said that, the people who buy it will most likely take it. I mean, the really funny thing is, the people who are buying these are going to be ripping the park and taking um, so the answer is no, we will not offer repair sales. But I know for a fact there are people who will, but they won't be us. The comment was 50,000 seems like a lot and doesn't seem like a lot at the same time. You're absolutely right. Um, how many big people would pay 1,200 euros for a box that's big? Um, and like this is a power cube. I don't know. And again, we, have, we can't hide from the reality. I think this is an amazing demonstration of a technology. I don't think it's an amazing product. But I think it's a product that will sell in the 50,000 range. Because you're not buying it for what it does, you're buying it for what it is. Uh, and that's a really interesting thing that, that, that for people to, and again, if you look at marketing, great marketing examples of, of, of this is that, is, you know, the Apple brand doesn't sell you a function at all. I don't tell how many megabits and blah, 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 don't know what they do is they, they sell you this thing, different concept. And so when you look at the marketing of this product, we're not selling it that it does three charges a day and, you know, it's 2.1 amp, uh, blah, blah, blah. What we're selling is that this represents the end of the battery. And that's, and that, and that's actually what we're selling it as. Right. Yeah. Sorry? But, but, but again, I, I, if you look at it as a functional product, yeah, but if you look at it as a functional product, yeah, of course it'll be obsolete, yeah? But, but again, when... The people who are going to buy this are not buying it as a power cube. They're buying it as something else. And the something else will never be obsolete. They're buying it because it's the first. Yeah. Stun is job when we're licensing to the phone industry. So. Okay. Uh, thanks. Well, I'm going to attempt, um, or I should say my son who's sitting on doing the intelligence stuff here, I'm going to attempt to get this video uploaded. Um, again, if there's any questions, I think that we will um, maybe come back and, and try to do this when it suits. I'm not going to set it that, but particularly when we come to launch yeah. some of the marketing stuff, it's which done. I think will be quite, um, again, at face value looks down, when you break down through, it's actually just perfectly rational process. Hey, so, um, thank you. Just need to Cheers. Thank you. Anybody is here. Uh, I want to pretty much thank everybody for taking the time to uh, watch this video. Um, I know there's probably a lot in it, an awful lot of questions of people about the technology, does it work, how it works, and so on. And to be clear, um, 
We're not getting into any technical details at this phase. What we'll be doing is hearing from the guys who are using it. Uh, the next webinar will announce the date of it early next week. Um, we'll also, in the next webinar, be showing you some of the other products that are in the pipeline. We'll be showing some of the R&D stuff with respect to where does the Orbo battery go after the power cube and it will be obviously in mobile consumer electronics so i want to say again thanks very much for myself and pat and we look forward to seeing you next time